Hello. You know, we're going to spend some time back in the Sermon on the Mount here in a few moments. But before we get there, I just want to tell a story of, of last night. Last night, my family and I were at home. And we could tell there was a storm brewing. And so we looked outside and, you know, the storm started coming. Wind was blowing real hard. And it wasn't raining, but there was a lot of dust in the air. And we're watching outside. It begins to rain. And, and suddenly we see just a small speck of hail. And the hail continues to grow and grow in size until literally we were seeing hail come down about the size of a racquetball, just, just smaller than a tennis ball. Last night I went around town and, and my vehicle wasn't the only one, but many vehicles and, and windows in town were, were, <laughs> were, were demolished basically by this hail that came. But I found it interesting in the context of where we are in the Word of God. I'll come back to that story by the end of this devotion, but, but I just think it's interesting how God was already stirring in me a word for this moment. We've been reading the the Sermon on the Mount. We've been looking at a sermon that Jesus Christ preached about His kingdom to His people. And so I want to continue that today. I want to read in Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to start in verse 25. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body. What you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See the flowers of the field they grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans, they run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Today, as as we dig into the Word of God, I want to speak on a subject that we have to comprehend as citizens of the kingdom of God. Jesus starts and ends. He sandwiches these verses with, with the same phrase. That phrase repeated in the beginning and the end is, Do not worry. Man, it's such an easy thing to say, but, but sometimes such a hard practice for us as, as children. It's, it's hard for us not to worry. Don't worry, he said, about what you will eat or what you will drink. Don't worry, he said, about, about tomorrow or what is coming. And see, what happens is normally in this kingdom, the kingdom of this world, we can get captivated by our thoughts. You know, as the hail comes down, I can become consumed with what if? What happens to my roof? What happens to my truck? What happens to the problems that are, that are going to come? What happens if, if, if a hole gets ripped through my house or my truck is towed? What am I going to do? You know, when I was a kid, I can recall, you know, I was five years younger than my brother. So there would be times where I was at home with my brother and my parents would go out. And, and I remember sitting at the top of my stairs And I remember thinking my parents were supposed to be home and and this thought coming to my mind, oh, it's it's nine o'clock and mom and dad aren't home. There must be a problem. I remember as probably a 10 year old kid sitting there beginning to write stories about what may have happened to mom and dad. Oh, they may have had a flat tire, but then more time passed. Oh, maybe something else came up. Oh, then more time passed. Oh, maybe they had an accident. And I, and I can remember getting myself worked up to the point of tears as a 10 year old because I wasn't sure whether or not mom and dad were ever coming home. I got myself to a place that, that my mom and dad were probably dead in a ditch somewhere and I was going to have 
to live in a different home because, because of this moment. And suddenly, lights pulled in the driveway and mom and dad came in the house. And, and my worry was for nothing. God's saying, you know, children, you know, my beloved, there's something I desire for you to comprehend. There's something that that you need to embrace in your lives. And it's the reality of who you are and the reality of who I am and the reality of my promises fulfilled in your life. He looked at you. He looked at me and he says, do you not know that you are more valuable than the birds of the air? I want to speak to you today that you are valuable. Sometimes we worry because we don't realize how valuable we truly are. You're a child of God. He's called you his own. He declares you his beloved. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. Yet at times we look in the mirror and we convince ourselves that we're not worth that much. That maybe we don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. That God, He sees everyone else, but He doesn't see me. I want to tell you today that God sees you because you're valuable. How do I know you're valuable? Because of who made you. I've done some research and and seen some things online where sketches that Picasso made that just had his little signature at the bottom. They're just a line on a piece of paper sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars simply because Picasso, his hand, the master's hand, touched that paper. Listen to me, child of God. You are absolutely valuable. Because the King of kings and Lord of lords created you. He created you for a purpose. He created you for good works. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. The Creator's hand has been placed upon you. His fingerprint is on you. His signature is in your life. You are valuable. You are the handiwork of God. Look at the self Look at yourself in the mirror and see how valuable you truly are. How do I get past worry? I've got to recognize that I, yes, I am valuable. I've got to receive the reality that I'm so valuable that God, the one who spoke everything I know into existence, loves me. God, the one, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, He loves me. Scripture says, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. He demonstrates His love for us that while I was still broken and while I wasn't perfect, that while I was a sinner, He sent His Son to die. Why? So that I could have relationship with Him. You are valuable. You are so valuable that God, the God of everything, loves you. How do I get past my worries? I've got to know how valuable I am. I've got to recognize that God loves me. And then he says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto me. You see, so often my worry becomes because I'm focused on what I want Not on what God has done. My eyes are on my needs, not on the one who provides for them. My focus is on my problems rather than looking at my Savior. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. You know, I need to look at God so I can recognize who He is. And when I recognize who God is, when I recognize the promises that He's fulfilled time and time again, that He is the God who provides, that He is the God who loves us, when I recognize His kingdom and His reign and authority in my life, I can suddenly trust. My confidence doesn't come from this world, but my confidence comes from Him. 
I recognize I'm not putting my trust in my truck. My trust isn't in my home. My trust isn't in what's in my freezer. But my trust is in who God is. Because of who God is, I am who I am. My righteousness came through Jesus Christ. And because of what Jesus Christ did, I'm now a joint heir with Him to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So that need, that want, that desire isn't that big of a deal. That problem, that circumstance, that situation isn't that great compared to who I am in Him. Jesus wanted us to understand it's imperative. There's a part of this kingdom we learn the reality of kingdom trust. Can you trust God? Can you trust Him for that situation that you're looking at? Can you trust Him to come through in the middle of turmoil? Can you trust God in the middle of today? To take care of what you're facing. You know, I want to encourage you to stop writing the story before you read the story that God has written. Stop writing the story of tomorrow when God desires to highlight the story of today. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, may he turn his face towards you and grant you his peace. And may you live not in anxiousness, but in confidence of who God is. Be blessed.